If you suffer from anxiety, depression, or any mood disorder, you should know that your underlying metabolic health impacts the state of your mood. In today's show, we're going to talk more about the connections between blood sugar health, metabolic health, and depression, drawing upon evidence from two recently published narrative review articles, one of which is titled Diabetes Mellitus Type 2 as an Underlying Comorbid or Consequent State of Mental Disorders. The investigators say depression has also been shown to be nearly two and three times more common in patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, respectively, meaning that if you have poor metabolic health, your risk for developing depression, anxiety, and having mood disorders is orders of magnitude higher compared to if you don't have metabolic health issues. Now, lest I remind you, data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, the NHANES data, this is a large ongoing epidemiological study, has found that 96% of Americans have some degree of poor metabolic health, predisposing a supermajority of the population to having mental health challenges involving depression, suicidal ideology, anxiety, and various mood disorders. Now, a lot of people say that depression runs in their family, but it's important to acknowledge that there is no genetic basis or connection between type 2 diabetes and depression. So what does that mean? That means our lifestyle, our dietary choices, the foods we eat, the exercises that we do or don't do, our sleep habits, our circadian rhythm, all influence our metabolic health, which influences our brain health. So the scientists talk about the shared etiological factors for the comorbid connection between diabetes and depression and poor metabolic health and depression, considering multiple organ systems, including the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, cortisol release. Uh, We also have hyperreactivity of the autonomic nervous system, causing people to be overly anxious and have excessive cortisol and and adrenaline uh, pathways going, catecholamine signaling, as well as inflammatory processes. I think that's not acknowledged or talked about enough, but it's quite common when you see people run their labs that their C-reactive protein is increasing and they feel really terrible. They feel down. They feel lethargic. They have malaise. Well, think about when you get sick. Do you feel really excited and enthusiastic? Well, when you're sick, you're generally more inflamed. Well, part of the malaise that accompanies sickness is inflammation. So if you're chronically inflamed from meta-inflammation, from metabolic inflammation, insulin resistance, uh, the the fat around the middle, uh, all of that, that is going to increase inflammatory signaling pathways and cause you to feel lousy, depressed, possibly anxious, uh, unmotivated. And this is like a, a vicious cycle of a snowball rolling downhill, collecting more and more momentum because what happens? Well, people feel depressed and anxious, so they self-medicate with hyperpalatable ultra processed foods. They go out and have indulgent meals. Maybe go get a soda pop. Maybe go to Jack in the Box or McDonald's or go have ice cream or binge on pizza. And that only worsens the problem, adding kerosene to a fire. So it's important to acknowledge that if you suffer from any anxiety, depression, or mental health issue, that you focused on metabolic health. And this has been talked about for a very long time. Chris Palmer recently has written uh, and talked a lot about this and has been featured on Andrew Huberman and various other podcasts and has a great book uh, about this if you want to dive into that. But it's important that this connection has been long established in the literature and it's just now making its way into layman discord, which I think is really important to recognize and acknowledge. But there's also other tools that we can uh, embark on to improve metabolic health as well as mental health. And that's why I'm such a big fan of sauna. And I want to thank this video show sponsor, bondcharge.com, the makers of the hottest yet lowest EMF sauna blankets on the marketplace. The sauna blanket gets up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. It's really small and compact. You can use this while you travel in your apartment, your condominium. You do not need a large footprint for this. But again, what makes this sauna blanket so appealing to me and my clients is it's the lowest EMF sauna blanket on the market. You turn this on, get in about five minutes after it starts to heat up, and it literally warms up your body. You will be sweating, and you will feel much more relaxed after you get out, take a shower. It's great for detoxification. We know that the heat increases heat shock proteins, which improve cognitive function, which improve brain signaling, and most importantly, in my opinion, help you get a good night's sleep. So you can save on this amazing at-home sauna blanket by going to bondcharge.com forward slash HIH to save 
save. I'll put links in the description below. But again, you can go to bondcharge.com for slash HIH to save on the hottest yet lowest EMF sauna blankets on the market. So going back to the connection between metabolic health and depression, again, I think this is really important to acknowledge. I myself in college suffered from depression and I wish I knew this information back then because I would self-medicate with food, with sugar, things like that. And I didn't know that there was a connection between the things that I was eating and how lousy I was feeling. And I think many people suffer from this. We all see this at the grocery store. Uh, people look anxious or depressed or lonely. They're getting ice cream, they're getting pizza, they're getting these sweets, these hyper palatable foods, which are only adding, as I mentioned, kerosene to a fire. So it turns out that there's ample evidence. There was a recently published paper in 2022 titled The Nexus Between Diabetes and Depression in Narrative Review. I think this is a phenomenal article if you want to dive into this. Again, if you have friends, family members who suffer from anxiety, depression, or any mental health issue, they should be aware of this connection, this nexus, as these investigators say. There is a high co-occurrence with diabetes and depression. Even pre-diabetes increases the odds ratio by some 10%. Uh, undiagnosed diabetes increases the odds ratio of developing depression by some 30%. So it's really important to recognize because many people are running around with pre-diabetes or undiagnosed diabetes and they don't really know it. I mean, I get friends and family members who send me labs all the time. I've worked with clients since 2006 looking at hundreds of labs and we see undiagnosed diabetes rampantly, whether it's an elevated hemoglobin A1C or significantly elevated non-fasting or fasting glucose levels, high triglyceride levels, increased uh, waist circumference, all the futures of metabolic syndrome that we've talked about before. This is so common and many of these people feel lousy. And again, it's this vicious cycle where because they feel crappy, they're self-medicating with junk food or alcohol, which is only worsening their diabetes, which is worsening their mental health issues. So it's really important that people understand that these are two sides of the same coin. They are interrelated. As these investigators say, diabetes and depression have common symptoms, including changes in appetite, low energy, weight gain, a poor concentration, and depression usually persists, uh, and it persists through families. You know, people talk about, well, my mother was depressed, or my mother was anxious, or my father is significantly depressed, and you do some deeper digging, and their father has significant belly fat, insulin resistance, drinks alcohol all the time, doesn't exercise, eats processed food. So it's like, how could anyone feel good living that? way. I mean, this is the most important thing to uh, consider. We've all had cheat meals. Uh, we've been shrank in college. I know many of you watching this have. You feel crappy the next day. Why is that? Because of inflammation. It turns out there was a study at Boston College that actually uh, administered uh, just vodka drinks to, to uh, party goers and wanted to see if their blood alcohol level correlated with inflammation. In, in it de indeed, it did. Uh, there was a significant and positive and linear correlation with increased blood alcohol levels and brain-derived tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF-alpha. So what this means is that if you binge shrink or you eat a bunch of junk food, you increase inflammation within your brain and that causes you to feel that sense of malaise. Like we mentioned, if you get COVID, if you get the flu, you feel tired, you feel anxious, you feel depressed, you feel unmotivated, your energy changes. These are, are common co-occurrences. So if you're constantly eating these processed foods, it makes sense that you would just feel lousy. And that's why we have various courses over courses.highintensityhealth.com to help you eat whole real foods. We've done many cooking videos. We've talked about a low-carb ketogenic diet, exercise. All of these factors are really important for improving cognition and mental health and alleviating the maladies that many people suffer from today. It's estimated that about 30% of American women are on some form of antidepressant and that those statistics are actually equally as high in adolescence. We know that our, our youth now are suffering from depression, anxiety, mental health challenges. Well, about 63% of the calories that your children consume come from ultra-processed foods. So why wouldn't they feel depressed? We know that there's this common association, this nexus between metabolic health and mood and depression. So it's time to get back to the basics, exercise, eating real food, compressing your feeding window, optimizing sunlight during the daytime, morning uh, light. My daughter and I, if it's pouring down rain, uh, we might drive to school instead of bike to school, but we make an effort to park the car far away and walk. So she's getting sunlight into her retinas, optimizing circadian rhythm health, eating real food, uh, limiting uh, some sweets and things like that to the weekends after a hike or after a hard workout. We might go get ice cream or might make some cookies or make some homemade pizza, things like that. So you can still live your life, but 
confine that to uh, 5% of the meals that you eat throughout the week. So again, just wanted to share this information with you, my friends, because it's the time of the year where many people feel lonely, isolated, depressed, anxious, and we need to understand this strong connection between the foods that we eat and underlying metabolic health and how that is impacting our brain, cognition, and our mood. So I appreciate you tuning in to the very end. Hopefully you found this information, the images, and the studies helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend or family member who may benefit, and we'll catch you in a future episode down the road.